just wander out of bed and throw yourself into the drama of the world, why not set a foundation for a strong day, which in time will lead to a better life by starting right here with us. Wonderful way to start a show. Mm -hmm. Now get up with peppers and develop a routine that works for you. Wake up to the sound of the best breakfast show. Numero Uno. Good morning. Welcome. This is Wake Up Nigeria. The only place where you can find the right ideas for breakfast, coupled with great conversations, amazing TV personalities like uh, myself and yeah. this gentleman right here. Definitely, you know how we do it. We're here to yeah. help you start out your day nice and easy. It's mm. actually Thursday. Yes. That's why we're dressed like this. Mm -hmm. You know you know how it is on Thursday. And I hope you are looking forward to today's show because we have quite a lot in store for you. Mm, yes, Artsy Thursday. Now we have another uh, piece of art that will be joining us a little later on the show. It's MM now. You know, she, she's a work of art all on her own. Uh, she will uh, be here definitely but today. Also, so much more set to happen on today's show. My name is Titi Lyle. Mike Messikeno is mine. Stream the show live. It's at TVC Entertainment TV. On Facebook, it's at TVC Connect. Yeah. On the terrestrial band, it's on the ultra high frequency channel 27, mm. UHF, uh, uh, Google TV, pardon me, and UHF channel 49 on terrestrial. So, you could literally watch us from anywhere as long as you have the TVC app. Download it, Android, iOS, no matter what you're using, one click and no stress. Definitely. Let's kick off this morning. We have a tech conversation. We're looking yeah. at how technology can be a friend or enemy. When it comes to financial management, Alex Ikeana Cho is our guest, best-selling author, investor, speaker, and the creator of Five Wealth Distinctions Framework. Yeah, it's already halfway through is it? September, almost. Well, uh, Just today about. is uh, what? No, it's 15. 15th. 15th? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly halfway through. Halfway, halfway. Yeah. How many days in September? Uh, mm, 30. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know when they ask that question, everybody, yeah. do, you, do you sing the song? Yeah, yeah from the beginning. September, April, yeah. Do you? September. Yes, of course. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. I have to. I actually have to. But it was 30 days half September. H-A-T-H. Oh. -H. I will always sing for me. All of them. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah, but 30 days. And when September's done, we are in the final quarter of the year, mm -hmm. October and all of that. Uh, I don't know. What did you guys, uh, what, are, what are your plans for the end of the year? October, oh, November, yeah. December? Yeah. I, I personally, I just want to say, uh, I, I, I don't want nobody to give my mother a key leg for this life a day. I just I want to enjoy it. Wow. <laughs> you know, really celebrated parts. Yeah, I really, I, for me, I, I, I want to enjoy the good mm. things of life even more. Yeah. I want to travel more. But you know, to travel these days, mm. you know, that is... <laughs> so that's that, really my plan is to take in life a bit more. Yeah. I, I hope to, I don't know. I have a few projects actually planned for the rest of... Um, MM, MM has a birthday yeah. coming. Yes, yes and um, yes, today is um, Eliana's birthday. Oh, oh, my oh today. Happy birthday, Eliana. That'll be, that'll be at the birthday shout out. We'll, yes, we'll give her a But I thought you will bring her here now. So <laughs> yesterday I went shopping for <laughs> gift packs. Oh, wow. Okay. Ha! I walk up from one end of Lagos Island to the next. No it way. It's crazy. Wow. Who, who are the packs for? For... The, the kids, for kids for our for friends. School, oh, yeah, okay. School, you have just ordered online. Wow. Ordered <laughs> online. <laughs> wow. This is not fair. Mike. Order no, online. You manage money. Order mm. online. MM, you are, you are the Jagaban. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to the news on Wake Up Nigeria. I am Mike Messi Keno. Now, in the UK, thousands of people are filing past the Queen's coffin after it was brought in a procession to Westminster Hall, followed by the King and his sons. The queue from Westminster Hall extends south and crosses Lambeth Bridge before turning north and snaking up the south bank, ending just after London Bridge. The Queen will now lie on st in state until 6.30 a.m. on Monday when her coffin will be taken to the nearby Westminster Abbey for the funeral. More details in this report. Queen Elizabeth is now lying in state in Westminster Hall, where hundreds of thousands of people are expected to file past her coffin in the coming days. Earlier this afternoon, the coffin of Queen Elizabeth II was transported from Buckingham Palace on a gun carriage in a slow-moving procession which lasted around 38 minutes. King Charles III, Prince William and Harry, 
and other senior royals followed on foot behind the coffin. Guns were fired in Hyde Park, and Big Ben, the great bell of the striking clock, was tolled every minute in the samba ceremony. Following the procession, a short service, led by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and attended by senior politicians including Prime Minister Liz Strauss and opposition leader Sir Kerr Starmer. O oh God, the maker and redeemer of all mankind, grant us, with thy servant Queen Elizabeth and all the faithful departed, the sure benefits of thy son's saving passion and glorious resurrection, that in the last day, when all things are gathered up in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of thy promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Meanwhile, the queue along the south bank of Thames stretch the entire way to London Bridge as people wait for their turn to pay their respects. You know, for probably everybody here, the Queen has been around for as long as anybody can remember. You know, there's a certain constant to, to all of this, so um, it's quite a, quite a special moment to see that final saying goodbye. And uh, I know a lot of people will be queuing to see her lie in state in the cathedral today and over the next few days. You know, I think everybody is very honoured to be able to say their respects, pay their respects and say their goodbyes. Um, and that's what the British people do best. And the ceremony and the dignity of how we conduct the, with the forces and the band. The Queen's closed coffin in public view in Westminster Hall, resting on a race platform called a catafalque and draped in the royal standard with the orb and scepter placed on top. The funeral will hold on Monday the 19th of September, a day which has already been declared a bank holiday. Welcome back. Let's take a quick look at what's happening on the covers of the papers this morning. Believe it or not, it is the 15th of September. It's a Thursday. We are going to start with the Guardian newspaper. And it says here, energy crisis forces Nigeria's 43 million households to spend 8.9 trillion naira per year. Electricity workers demand reversal of privatization, say new owners are hustlers. Experts worry over obsolete refineries, gas processing facilities, and stakeholders insist Nigerians paying for inefficiencies amid tariff hike. Just beneath the masthead there, it says Police Service Commission Chairman Smith resigns amid recruitment controversy. Uh, Google lists telecom sector media NGOs as highly vulnerable to cyber attacks. Uh, arrest quiz Gumi group urges DSS, Lord's agency on Mamu's detention. And uh, it also says here, you're sleeping, Mr. President, PDP chief tells Buhari. 27, page 27 has more on that. Right at the bottom, Southwest PDP revokes, or rather resolves, uh, to back Atiku as Makinde insists IU must go, and Buhari's emo visit, waste of resources, say citizens. That's what we have on the cover of The Guardian. We also have with us uh, the Punch newspaper this morning. It says here, Atiku Wabara uh, meet aggrieved governors. Makinde demands IU's exit. Former BAT chair Jibrin forced to resign. Party still in crisis, says Body George. And uh, beside the masthead there, it says pro-chancellors, VCs intervene as uh, in ASU's seven-month strike. The top there, federal government, EU, AFD, complete 104 billion hour electricity agreement. Page 19 has more on that. Bank deposits rise by 24% to 42 trillion naira. PSC chairman Smith resigned amidst uh, police recruitment crisis. And uh, let's see what else we have here. Now, there is a photo story here as an AKT road collapses. Uh, motorists groan, seek government's intervention. And uh, on NSARA's panel awards 289 million hour compensation to 74 victims. All right, that's all we have time for when it comes to the headlines in the dailies this morning. We have fitness coming your way. Welcome back. Right. And I hope you're able to pick up something from there. And uh, 
upcoming beast. How fun, how they be? Ah. The queen, the upcoming beast. You don't, you, 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 you fallen off. The What's happening? I have, and I feel Why? strange. I'm not happy about it. Yeah, that's that's not fair. Um, we gotta get you so back. I've this. I've realized that the trick to it is getting an, an accountability partner. Mm. I'm working towards. Mm. I already have one, and I'm hoping that this, we can help it? each other. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. Wow. <laughs> accountability wow. partner is very important. Actually. It is. It is. Because I, 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 I was there trying to help Auntie, but Auntie didn't mention me. It's okay. So unreliable. It's, okay. Yeah. it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Honestly. It's okay. You it's are okay. Unreliable. Extremely. Well, what is this Sometimes. one saying? And look at but me going steady. Anyways, <laughs> we have quite an interesting dis discussion. Uh, also, uh, a tweet came out from um, a handle at Lady Rosa underscore double zero one, and she says Davido brought a um, piano from South Africa two years ago. A piano, of course, you know it's the sound, yes. uh, it's the indigenous South African, South African uh, sound. sound, and it says uh, it it's a made it a successful genre in Africa and beyond. Hmm. Whiskey is now hopping on the same genre from uh, after Davido wow. made it a successful genre. Hmm. Now, this is how many African artists have been benefiting from Davido's success for over 12 years. Uh, and then hmm. DJ Maforisa jumps on the tweet, quotes the tweet, and replies and says, Kabza and Maforisa was the first to put Whiskey and Burner Boy on a Amapian SIC, hmm. Amapiano song, Sponono. That well, that was I don't know if it's pronounced that way. Yeah, wow. That was a historical moment three years ago. Research before tweet. Wow. Also, it was the first time Wiz and Bonner jumped on the same song together. Let it sink in. And but it doesn't end there. This is where it now gets interesting. Davido now comments <laughs> and says, "You never liked me. Why? I've always been good to you. Anyways, away now." Choo 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 choo. Yeah. <laughs> choo choo choo. <coughs> you know, and you know, you know, in all this is whiskey never bothers to even. You basically will never put his never. mouth to it, which is mm. one thing I love about him. Yeah, but mm. isn't the video talking some fans, some fires that really don't? He shouldn't be. Mm. Should he be involved in all? And then his brother also mm. comes in. He's, he's reposting the brothers. Um. So you know, it's especially when it comes to Twitter. You never know. I always feel like. A lot of the conversations that happen on certain platforms are working towards something or someone is trying to build conversation around this because something is about to come out. Maybe a new song is about to drop or something. Maybe there's a new concert or a new tour coming up. That's what it feels like to me. So stoking the fire, I'm not sure. But um, <clears throat> the, that statement, you never liked me, is where I'm going to come from. There must have been some other signs that Davido was getting before he said something like that. I don't have as much information about this as, as you probably do. So, uh, uh, Mehdi comes up with his own and says, ah, say, Nami, Mehdi, which other artist? Let me check. He uh -uh. also, David also quoted and said, ah, Nami should invest on my piano video. Ah, Nami bring on my piano. And then the discussion now goes up. Quite a number of people. But this is where it's, um, where it's, uh, you see, most of these guys at the top, it's their fans that stoke wars. If you remember recently, there was a Burner Boy whiskey something. Mm. There, was, there was something where, where, where Bernard was tackling with Kid fans. said, if it's not that I knew with Kid, I'd have punched him anytime I'd seen because of, Yo, you know? Yeah. So the fans get to, and I feel like they shouldn't have responded. You know? Yeah, um, when talking about the South African sound, I really think that it was the South Africans that actually brought it to Nigeria, really. Mm -hmm. Because you have many of the streaming platforms mm -hmm. who that um, play their music. You have um, even our own indigenous um, um, TV channels mm -hmm. that play this music, that play some of the yes, South, yeah. South African uh, music. I can remember some of them now. They are currently playing in my head long before even, you know, David Doe jumped on it with a few, um, with one, the other South African um, artists. Mm. I can't remember mm. his name right now. Uh, and then focalistic. Focalistic, even before then. Mm. And we've actually enjoyed their sound. I really think that um, this is not the time to go. So you remember back to go head to head on you, whose sound. You remember who's, how who's, how people how outside um, in foreign lands it was said that mm. whiskey was the one that brought out Azonto. Hmm. There was a whiskey thing. So they have this thing of saying hmm. that when Nigerians jump on it, hmm. it, it now becomes, becomes popular. popular worldwide. Mm -hmm. So that's what. It, 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 I mean, that's, that's what, what, what everything is trying, is trying to go that look. Is. Okay, it was there. <gasps> but Davido, when Davido jumped on it, he yeah. now made it more... Popular. So now, even if you do a, a, a Google search, an SEO search on the names, Whiskey, Davido, Burner, 
you'll see, if you put the three there together at the same time, you'll see a graph over the past few years, and you see the lines going up, and you see whose name is used most in tweets, posts, websites, blog posts, everything. Now, this all adds up. The conversations are built around people that have the most clout. And I, use, I don't use the word clout as just people that go and talk on Twitter. I'm saying actual, verifiable, quantifiable clout online. So that's why this music eventually blows up. It's not really just a Nigerian thing, because I feel like when international artists uh, like Chris Brown and, and um, who else has featured on the Nigerian, uh, with mm. the Nigerian recently... You Ed, know, Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Yeah, they, they, it's strategic. It's all business. That's why it's called music business. And now that uh, Ama Piano has come out, it's still growing. Um, but, but I don't you know, want to attribute it to I just being Nigerian. I understand the place of clout, but Davido made it a bit personal when he goes like, you, you never liked me. I think that was a little bit unnecessary. Uh, well, we don't know what the backstory is. <laughs> exactly. Right? And from what his brother is saying, he's saying that the, he, their music producers have, and artists have disrespected him in the past. So you don't know where. But remember, but remember that I, that I, whether I like you or not, you are not the first presenter that came into Nigeria. I could be. And so whether I like you doesn't space, matter. Doesn't it doesn't change true. facts. It now depends on how, the time <laughs> I became popular. The yeah. queen. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's it. What do you think about all that's been happening? You can uh, let us continue that conversation at TVC. You can use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. We are back, people. You're still on to Wake Up Nigeria. And yes, it is our favorite part segment on the show. Yeah. With me is Chef Ife Miller. <laughs> yeah, and this Good morning, morning we are making vegetable, Ooh, yam, and potato porridge. porridge. Ooh. Sounds yummy, I know. <laughs> Let's talk about the ingredients. So, of course, we are using our yam, mm -hmm. our potatoes, our vegetable. We are using ogo, ogo. for today. Yes, we can use green. And we are using our dry fish, already fried. And then there's pomo somewhere. Okay, okay. <laughs> and this tomato mix, mm -hmm. tomato, scot bonnet, ginger, garlic. Okay. And then we have our salt, crayfish, onion. So... Is and it. tomatoes. What's the tomato here for? For garnishing. Oh, just for garnish. Okay, great. Um, this is like a very easy recipe. Um, not sure how the kids are going to feel about this because even my kids do not like yam. But oh, yeah, really? potatoes, they love it. Yeah, that's um, adding the potatoes so that you Yeah, to give it, it that sw sweet, sweet, yes. Yeah. There's, there's that role Feel. that it plays apart from, you know, its nutritional benefits. So now uh, let's get cooking, right? Yes. yes. Great. So where do we start off? Um... We have to make our pepper sauce. Okay. Oh, we are making a pepper sauce yes. and then... Before we add everything, it's just a one pot oh, dish. Oh, it's just a one pot dish. Yes. Okay, so we have to... Um, Fry. Okay. With um, veg uh, red oil. Okay. Somewhere. Yeah, okay, yeah, and we have our palm oil locking around. Yes, so, okay, so, so after that, now add all that things. Oh, okay, okay. Um, a, a very easy recipe, like I said earlier on. And of course, we are making use of panla. There's a certain flavor that panla actually, you yes, know, I've gives to your meal. You fried, fried it? Yes. I mean, like... With salt. How do you fry that? You wash it with salt. Okay. And then you fry. In oil? Yes. Really? Yes. Either vegetable oil or red oil, but already you have to blanch red oil a bit. Okay. And then what it gives it like another taste. Yes, and the really? way it gives it to the it comes out. Ooh. Really nice. Okay, so maybe that's the trick to what people use in making banana stew. Yes. <gasps> it's the same thing. Ah, oh, that's why it always uh, the tastes see, very nice. The one you see they sell in the show glasses. Mm. You have to fry it first. Oh, yes. nice. You see why you should always tune in to Wake Up Nigeria? We have chefs that come up with hacks that would make your life easier and also add a bit of spice. You know, yeah. to your cooking, right? Right, right, great, fantastic. So, uh, for our potatoes, we need to start peeling them peeling, off, right? Yeah, great. Um, yeah, if you are just joining us, so get to work, oh, okay. you know, get the pan, the pot, whatever it is that you need. Yeah. Uh, while I remind our viewers on what it is we are cooking this morning, of course, with me in the kitchen is Chef Ife Million, yeah. and we are making. Um, vegetable, yam, and potato porridge, right. guys. On your screen right, we have the ingredients. If you missed that on it earlier on, we have our salt, yam, fish, onions, um, potatoes, palm oil, vegetable, and the vegetable we're using, of course, is ugu. 
and we have our seasoning cubes, of course, to add that extra flavor to our meal. And we have ginger, garlic, pepper, and tomato, tomato mix. And for our pepper tomato mix, it's not like the, it's not the processed one. It's actually the fresh one because it's been one. blended already, right? Yes. Great. So we are going to um, start off with our pepper sauce. And then we, you know, put in the yam, the potatoes, the sweetness, and voila, breakfast is ready. Innovate, of course. We have to head over to the couch now for some discussion with Mike. Wow, Chef Ify Million. Uh, I need Chef Ify, I know, but now that Million has added, very soon it will be Billion. All right, nice one there. Now, on our first guest discussion this morning, we're joined by the Branding and Communications Manager of FABE International Foundation, Naomi Omotosho. Now, FABE is a non-governmental, not-for-profit environmental health and sustainability organization passionate about the establishment and improvement of an eco-conscious generation committed to conservation, sustainability and protection of the environment great to have you that was quite a mouthful bring it down what who is uh, or what is fabe and what does fabe do fabe is an environmental sustainability organization mm. we are focused on um, experiential advocacy and educating the envir the people in the environment about how to care for their environment and any dangers that climate change poses on the activities that we carry out in our environment. Why is it important to care for the environment? Well, there are a lot of things going on in the world right now. And most times, human activities affect the way um, our climate reacts back on the environment. Mm. So we need to um, strike a balance in order to protect our health and our environment as well. OK, so in what ways? How, how long has FABE been on the scene? Well, we've been established since 2008. That's mm. June 5th. Okay. And we've been... Um, we have several programs. We have the school advocacy program, that is the Echo Schools NG project. And we have, um, it started in 2020 during the COVID-19 period. We partnered with, we were supported by Axe Foundation and um, Access mm. Bank. Mm. And we've been able to train like 3,000 children in um, low-income communities. Mm. And in 2021, we moved on to... Um, Lagos, still in Lagos State, we were still able to like train about 4,000 children. But this year, we moved on to um, Abeokuta Ogun State, and mm. we are gradually growing in Abeokuta as well. The, the, the kids you spoke about, the 3,000 kids, what do you train them on? Oh, they are trained on upcycling, recycling, um, composting, and gardening as well. So um, we try to educate kids in low-income schools on how to recycle plastics because we notice that we, um, they are the future of tomorrow, so they need to know how to like, take care of their environment from now on. Mm. So they are trained on how to recycle, how to sort their waste, and how to upcycle um, from plastics and other um, waste materials. So um, in certain schools in Lagos, we have like one in Surulere. They create like Ottomans from the pet, pet, pet bottles they collect in their school. So an Ottoman is just like a round table that you can sit on. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's it's also a decor piece that people use at home too. So um, they create up, um, Ottomans from pet bottles that they've upcycled in their school. Then also they have the um, gardening section in their school too. So students garden using just a small space in their school. If they have little space, then for those that have like very big space, they also garden there too. All right. So now this. Well, uh, you're doing a great work when it comes to interaction with the public sector and, of course, the private sector. How about the government? How is your interaction with them? Because there is a lot when it comes to policies that they can put in place, especially you spoke about climate change. This is something that uh, governments around the world, some have really put in a lot. When it comes to the case of the government, how have you been able to interact with them? Have you been able to do anything with them? Is there anything on that um, level? Yes, we've gotten support from La CEPA and LASMA especially when it comes to um, the um, Echo Schools NG project. They've also supported in training kids to, in some of our programs, especially the upcycling and the recycling factor. Mm. Then there are sometimes we, we hold like sensitizations in communities because we also need to sensitize the community and women in the community on the impact that um, plastics and their waste is um, bringing on the climate. Mm. So they also support us in those ways. So uh, um, um, two days back, there was this video of, uh, of a man who was throwing waste into 
uh, a gutter or something, and he was arrested and he was charged to court and all of that. This was during the rain, you know, plastics, he, he threw this inside, and we know we have in Lagos here. Um, those rules are, maybe, there, there might be a lot of people that don't know why there is a need not to do this. Why should you not throw plastic into canals and all of that? What are the what are the dangers? Maybe if people understand this, they might not they might not do it. So can you you know give can you enlighten some people out there a bit on the dangers of throwing plastic around without finding a way to recycle it or something? Oh yeah, there are so many dangers. Um, first, there's the danger to our health because these plastics are going somewhere. The ones that are thrown into the gutters, they have to go somewhere. So they end up in the ocean most times and. Um, it harms the aquatic animals. Then it also clogs the ocean, the, path, the pathway to the ocean, causing flooding. But when it comes to our health, aquatic animals, some take in these plastics, thinking they are food. In the case of sea turtles, they take in plastics, probably very colorful plastics, thinking they are like jellyfishes mm. or foods that they take in the ocean. So these things come back to us. In fact, there are so many studies that have shown that microplastics are now present in certain aquatic animals like fishes and so many other aquatic animals that we take in. Mm. So these are dangerous to our health because they are cancerous to our, our health. Mm. Then also, when it comes to the case of flooding, these plastics will clog waterways and water has to go somewhere. Mm. So definitely it will branch into some people's houses, into streets and all that. So it poses a lot of dangers to human health and to the climate as well and our environment because they will cause flooding. Does, we just have to round up, but I just wanted to ask, does, is FAPE doing anything when it comes to deforestation? Because on my way here, there are quite a number of places I've seen trees being cut down and all of that. Is there any afforestation plan from, you know, FAPE? Do you do, you, do, you, do, you do yes. that? Yes, yes, we do. We have tree planting programs, especially when it comes to our Echo Schools NG project. Okay. Um, students also participate in tree planting in their schools and also in the areas around them. Then we also try to train um, students to remember to plant at home, not just in their school, but like when they are taking in something, keep the seeds and then plant trees in their houses or their surroundings. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you. I hope they're able to learn something. Yeah, I just want to end with a quote that uh, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is right now. Right. Now. Thank you so much. All right, hope you're able to pick up something there. That's all that we can take. We'll take this time out now. Don't go anywhere. There's quite a lot more to come on the show. Hello, welcome back. Now it's time for us to have our book chat. Hmm, we have a piece with us titled Redefining Talent skill sets needed to become better in the workplace. The author, Charles Ume, is a published author, business consultant, and inspirational speaker. It's great to have you on the show with us. Morning, TC. Good to be here. All right. So um, I have a feeling this book has been a long time coming. <laughs> uh, sure. When did you put it together? Finally, last year, 2021. But it's been in the plans for how long? Okay, let's see. The pandemic here gave us more reason to bet it. So okay. 2020. Yeah. Okay. All right, then. So you put together uh, a piece that talks about human skills. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people have different types of skills in crafts, arts. Uh, they know how to use Excel. Is that the kind of skills you're talking about? <laughs> okay, when you talk about human skills, you were looking at those um, skills that you can do without in the workplace. Okay. So I know the first conversation is that um, in this era where we have most people working remotely, um, <clears throat> most organizations are looking more people with technical skills. But one thing about the pandemic here was that it taught us more that we needed more people that could communicate more without the technical skills. Mm. We needed people that could relate more with people. Okay. So, so that was what bent there. So human skills here, we look at those um, social skills. We're yeah. talking about... Okay, there's, yeah. there's quite a lot. There's quite a lot you've listed here. I'm yeah. definitely going to jump into it. Um, so what you're basically saying is that since there's more remote work yeah. uh, and, of, of course, opportunities to work overseas, yeah. there are certain skills that uh, employers, organizations are looking forward to. So if that person, that organization has those skills, they, they don't want to lose them. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so if you look at earlier on, um, there used to be 
um, the demand more for technical skills. Sure. But, but like I said, um, the pandemic here taught us that we needed more people that had the hats that could connect more. And most, most organizations had to promote people that could connect more with their teams because um, at the end of the day, humans are not technology, humans are humans first. So whoever has that ability to control, to manage and to work with people effectively stands out. Yeah. And to work with people effectively, you've indicated here, chapter one, you need social capital. Yes. Uh, now, social capital, uh, it's, it's not, you know, a buzzword. It's not talking about social media here. You're talking about um, that um, exchange, that connection you have with people in your immediate work environment. Uh, but go further. So, 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 so what social capital? So, um, like we're discussing, there are different kinds of capital. In this era, um, you meet people because of how good they are, what they do, they are intangibles. Now, um, so in this era, most of the times when you want to employ people, most of the time, the first place for you to go to social media, you yeah. look at their digital footprints. Okay. And their digital footprints most times show you what they are all about. And we can't shy away from this, that's the reality. So we're seeing that um, prior to now, we might be asking, who's your dad, who's okay. your mom? What's the name of the family you come from? But in this era, we're looking at what impact can you bring to the table? What are those intangibles that make you stand out? And we're saying if you want to um, exit in the workplace, you must be able to have those social skills that stand you out. So social capital is one. You might not have the physical cash, but your capital could get you into rooms that um, money wouldn't take you into. I, why do I feel like you're talking to me? <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like my phone has phone numbers of people that... <laughs> I probably might need one day, and I've never really had to use them, but I, probably in an organization, I might not be the highest paid, but maybe they need somebody's phone number. You know who you're calling now. You know it's me. <laughs> so, 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 yes. But I'm thinking about the fact that, you know, going further, um, people that lack yep. social capital in the workplace, what are the detriments of that? So um, if you lack social capital, the funny thing is that you're like... Um, you're losing money, you're leaving money on the table. Wow. Okay. Because at the end of the day, we, we really run with people that are top of the mind. So we're saying, um, what, what, even, what gives you capital? We're saying the world has skimmed you out by not having physical capital. Okay. <laughs> so you have a chance to show um, how good you are. Mm -hmm. So um, your, your, your skills in the workplace, what makes you stand out at work? What's that thing that makes it impossible for everyone on your team to do without, not to do without you? So we're saying, be able to leverage on those strengths okay. and showcase more. The idea is showcase. Social capital is about showcasing your own strengths. That um, we've. I'm so sorry to, to cut you there because okay. I, I wanted to talk. This word capital keeps popping up at my at, at me. Yeah. Uh, but when you think of capital uh, and it's not actual tangible money, yeah. um, you need to know how to negotiate with it. Perfect. So if you have actual money, it's very easy to throw money at people. True. Uh, you get things done when you have the money. But if you have only social capital, where, how do you begin to negotiate in the office? So that's the skill. So um, your ability to convert it stands you out. Like we're, we're given scenarios. So for instance, um, um, I want to buy, um, you want to buy a car for your organization. But at the end of the day, you understand that the organization you want to buy a car from, have the, they need something from you. So, okay, let's look at advert rate. Um, they need to do advert. We come up with the cost of advert for one month. Okay. And that's equivalent to some cars for my team. Okay. At the end of the day, we exchange without physical cash. Okay. And we have something on the table. Mm -hmm. So your ability to think that's true and come up with that stands you out first. Mm -hmm. And not everybody can think that process true. Okay. So um, that's one example. And there, it, it cuts across every field. So there's something you have that someone else doesn't have. So we're seeing bring it to the table, convert this, and make sure that you use it to your own uh, advantage. Yep. And this works in, in every organization? Yes, it does. So the idea is you would have to think it's true. Most people don't really know what they have. So we're like, um, list out all the things you have and find someone that is not even in your own bubble. Because I always assume that when we're in our bubble, we don't see how strong, we don't see our strength. It's always good to bring out someone that is not in the bubble, that sees you well and is able to place your own cards on the table and help you see them clearly. So it okay. works everywhere. Okay, so now uh, in an organization... Uh, part of the talents that organizations are looking for are people that have social capital, people that have negotiation skills. Yep. Uh, but where does the place of just being nice to people now stand? Uh, because in the end, you have some very powerful players. You have some very strong personalities in the workplace. Yeah. Uh, and you don't really like them. 
you know. Um, so where does that come into play? So um, when you say you don't like people, I always, I always tell people in the workplace, it's not your business to like or not like. Wow. Um, the idea is that work has to get done. But mm. people, and we always remember people, um, there is, there's a gatekeeper that his work is to open the gate. And whether you like him or not, your job is to make him feel good. Hmm. And um, it, it cuts across every industry. Everyone will always remember how you make them feel. Okay. So at the end of the day, you need to be kind to people. You need to be kind. You need to show courtesy. You need to have camaraderie. Hmm. Your ability to do those things in the workplace um, keeps, you, keeps you on that social um, list. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and increases your bank account. A social bank, capital bank account. <laughs> social capital bank account. <laughs> so you might not be the highest paid yet, yeah. but hey, you might be the person that your organization does not want to lose. True. Why? Because you're kind, because you have social capital, and because you know how to use it. Use it. Use it. Use it is the key thing. You might have it, but don't know how to use it. So we're saying use it. And um, back to the pandemic here. Mm -hmm. The pandemic here taught us that people, um, people that had more emotional intelligence, that were that were people, people, yeah. were um, that th that skill was more important than people that had technical skills. So we're wow. saying wow. use it well in this era, and you win. I have to say a big thank you to you, Charles Ume, here with an amazing book, Redefining Talent, Skill Sets Needed to Become Better in the Workplace. A great piece. Uh, I'm going to be going through this one. Hopefully you have a question or two. Use our hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC. Let's see what you think. We're heading back into the kitchen at this point. Something's cooking. Yes, Chef Ify Million had at work as usual. And we are making vegetable yam and potato porridge. Yes, I know. Is it porridge or potage? Porridge, potage, all same, same. <laughs> right? Great. <laughs> right. Let's talk about the ingredients for okay. our meal. So we have our potato, yeah. our vegetable, we have our yam, mm -hmm. our pomo, and then we have our fish. Banla fish. Yeah. And then our pepper sauce, which is already fried. Okay, so and tell then... us what you have done so far. Okay, so we just um, added our vegetable oil. Okay. No, not vegetable oil, palm, palm oil. oil. Yes. Then we added our onion. Okay. And then tomato pepper mix, which okay. is um, scot bonnet, tomatoes, mm -hmm. ginger, garlic. Mm -hmm. We fried it a bit and now we added our banla, banla fish. Guys, you have no idea what is happening here in the studio. This recipe has filled the air. I mean, so much flavor coming from that, from what's cooking right now, and it is beautiful. I mean, it really smells delicious. Love it, love it, love it. I see that you've recently added, you just added the pomo. Yeah, so just right? we want to take out our fish. But why are you taking it out? <laughs> we have to take it out because I just wanted to sauté it. Oh, okay. I wanted to get all of that um, mix pepper mix into it. Yes. Okay. Let's use... Um, no, oh, that is big. Big, yeah. big, 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 big. Take that out. So now it's time for us to sauté uh, more, right? Yes. Get all that flavor in. And the pepper. Nice, nice, nice. So when that is done, what's next? So we just add our yam. Mm -hmm. Water, then have, we just have to allow it to cook a bit. Okay. Because of the potato is soft. Yeah. Okay. So the potato goes faster. in last. Yes. Okay. And then when so the potato goes in, what's next? That's after it. After that, the vegetable. Vegetable. Yes. Okay. And then the vegetable, we don't leave it on no, heat no, for no, too no. long. So these are crayfish. Mm. Looks good. And then now our Cameroon pepper. Good. Oh, Cameroon. Ooh. Yeah. No, I believe that there are three major ingredients that one must have in your kitchen. Your Cameroon pepper, garlic, and your ginger. Yeah, you could also have other spices as well, but I believe that these are your three major ingredients you should have because it's a certain kind of flavor um, that your Cameroon pepper gives to your meal. Yes. Yellow pepper, Cameroon pepper, ooh. I think they're the same thing. Yellow, no, they're not. It's the same, it's the dry one that makes them. I think so, yes. No, it's not. Are you it's, sure? No, it's not. The Cameroon pepper is dried out. Yes, like the it's... yellow pepper, when it's dried, that is when it becomes... I don't know because... I don't know. I think that anyway, is what it is. Anyway, we are going to do our research <laughs> and come back with you. Come back to you on that. We'll find out if it's actually the yellow pepper that is dried out to become Cameroon pepper or there is 
the Cameroon Pepe. But anyways, um, so much stuff happening here in the kitchen. Chef Ife Million at nice work. Already. Yeah, so right now we're just going to cover, cover the pot and leave that yam to cook for maybe how many minutes? Maybe 10 minutes before we add our potatoes. Okay, yes. so what we're doing with our potatoes here is just give the meal that sweetness. You know, it's at sweet potatoes, but anyways. So it's definitely going to, you know, add that sweetness and delicious flavor. We're working with a lot of flavors, like a marriage of flavors happening yeah. here, you know, in um, with our breakfast this morning. Um, so you have the sweet potatoes, you have the Cameroon pepper flavor, oh, you have the flavor fish. from the Manla, you have the flavor from... The Tomo doesn't need so much flavor anyway. <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. Just, mm, it just let's just have it there. <laughs> right, right, and then... Um, well, you can do without it. Yeah, and then there's also the role of onions in your meal. Yeah. Onion also has, like, a special kind of flavor oh. that it gives to your meal like it is ooh. so um if you at home are watching right now you're like oh what's going on in here or maybe you just joined us we'll just let you peep into what's happening here in our pot see that see that ooh. Mm. yeah a lot of people are going to be digging into that meal later mm. on and if it's something that you want to try out later on Please do not forget to tag us on all our social media platforms at TVC Connect. We'd like to see those videos, we'd like to see those pictures. Let us know that, okay, this is what I learned from Chef Ife Million on the show today. Yeah. We need to hear from you as well. Just want to be sure that you're a part of what's happening here on the show. We have to go on a quick break now. It's the top of the hour. One hour down, 45 minutes to go. If you're just joining us, then you kind of missed quite a bit. You know, but hey, we still mm. have about 45 more minutes to spend with you. Welcome back. It's the second lap of the show, and we have an absolutely wonderful breakfast show. Now talking about breakfast, there is a... A, a dancer in the kitchen who is dazzling with <laughs> ify, breakfast ify billions. The kitchen, mm. And then you have breakfast. If you if you billions, what's happening there? What's what's happening? What, what are you doing? Nothing more, just cooking. Ah, just cooking. <laughs> That's all. That's all. That's all. Please That's all. Time, time, is great. time is great. Time is great. Right. Well done, Chef Ify. Thank well you. done. Thank you. Now we have the license and the know-how to have fun. Mm. All right, stick with us for uh, the next lap. And, uh, of course, we are ensuring and we are promising you that it's going to be a roller coaster ride. My name is Michael Messi Kim. And I'm Titi Laya Onison. You can, of course, stream this show live on tvcentertainment.tv or on Facebook at TVC Connect. You can also catch us on GoTV Channel 27 and UHF Channel 49. Mm. Download the app and you can catch us also on Facebook. There's a whole lot in the second hour uh, here for you. Birthday shout outs are coming right up. Yes. Mm. So, Artsy Thursdays are always uh, really interesting. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. mm. It, so, yeah, we're talking about uh, earlier on here. Yeah, there was um, a discussion that uh, that came up from that while we're talking, and it was uh, Burner Boy. We saw Burner Boy with uh, Timaya. Okay. As we saw that video, by the way. Hanging around, <laughs> and so what? Say some. I, I know you mentioned something about how um, how there was a, some sort of a camaraderie. Both of them, of course, grew up in Botakat and all of that. And it's good to see these kind of things with artists. But I like, but I would always say that in a, a number of times, that animosity in quotes kind of makes them a bit more. It, it breeds the kind of competition we need. We don't need them to be slacking. Look, as it stands, Afrobeat is a big thing now, mm. and they are basically Nigerians. Almost our best import, apart, of course, apart from our brains, when we, we are medical import, yeah. uh, export, export, pardon me. Yeah. Uh, so Afrobeat is one thing that it's, it's really doing quite well. And I feel like if there, if, at times you don't need to be too charming. Sometimes you need to understand, look, it's a competition. And mm -hmm. in quotes, you're not competing with yourself. Oh. That's mm -hmm. something I always try to tell people. But, uh, Some people say you're that, that, yourself, that, oh. that, that you're uh -huh. your own competition. I don't actually believe that either. You are, look, look. I feel like, but if, if, if we want to stick in the music world, even internationally, <laughs> there was this whole East Coast, West Coast thing that happened in the 90s, uh, and mm. it, it made better music. The truth is, if there's no one you're competing with, there's no reason to do better, to be better, to make better work. Um, I believe I that you should only be in competition with your higher self. Hmm. Really? <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. Uh, yes. So, yeah. yes. Because the truth is, um, mm. I, I, everyone would cater to what you do. You would definitely find someone that loves what you do, that appreciates what you do. 
there, I believe that there's somebody for everybody in regards to, you know, their talents. Let me give you a short and, story. Let me yeah. give you a short story, personal experience. There was this particular competition I won, and a brand was sponsoring it, and mm. we were trying to pro profile ideas to work with the brand. Yeah. And I went to the brand manager's office. I'm getting to the office. And right in front of his desk, all other brands that did that particular product, yeah. he had them in front of him. Mm. He was just looking at them. Lined up. Now, mm. it, it's not like I don't know, but it, it just struck me. as like, look, there's a market. Mm. They are pushing the same kind of thing. For instance, if it's foam, yeah. there's a market. Foam is foam. Mm. But what will make my foam to make somebody go buy my own foam instead of yours? Mm. He was looking at that brand. So it's 247. He sits down in front of him and he's just right up there. What are these people doing that are better than me? Yeah. Let me give you a small case scenario. You, you, I mean, we were here. We saw how BlackBerry alone yeah, had 53% of the, the market, market phone, mm. smartphone share. Today, BlackBerry is selling cybersecurity. And software. And software. <laughs> Not because they wanted to. Yeah. Omo, you are, let, look at, maybe someday on motivation, you should just call me. Because see this thing <laughs> I just gave you now. Next Monday, what do you think, Shagun? Oh they should just, I should have no motivation. Say, you no are not, more. you are, my title of my motivation is, you are not your competition. Ah! There's always someone. You are not your competition. Amen. But do you know that there are a lot of people that actually fall into the pressure and, uh, because of the kind of competition man. that <laughs> they find themselves in. So I really do not encourage, you know, ah. letting oh, yeah, your so anyway, we have, we have to, yes. We are, we are raining <laughs> motivational speakers. Right. You I know that Hopefully Let's the rain hope it's won't not raining. bring you down. Oh, uh, yeah. Four months. Now we head over to tech this morning. Now, this one will really interest you when we have Alex Yenacho in the building. You know it's going to be interesting. We're looking at how technology can be a friend or enemy when it comes to financial management. I'm sure Titi will be licking our lips now or trying to get set for this one. Well, Alex is a best-selling author, investor, speaker, and the creator of the Five Wealth Distinction Framework. It is great to have you, Alex. You're welcome. Thank you, bro. Wonderful. So, um, financial management. What? Are, let's start with that term because that's a term a number of people use but might not understand. What exactly is financial management? Yeah, how, do you become, how, are you, how do you manage things financially? Yeah, it's basically about you taking charge. Right, you take in charge about your finances, and I really like to look at it as you being able to manage yourself around finance. Mm. Right, so people talk about managing your money, that's hard. What I talk about is managing yourself around your money. That's easy. what's the difference? Yeah, there's a whole lot of difference. I mean, for example, there's a difference between budgeting and planning your money. Mm. When I say budget your money, there is a thing that goes off in your head. There's a negative vibe, like restriction, like, oh, I'm going to suffer for a while. Mm. But when I say plan your money, it's joyful. It's a thing. Everybody wants to plan his money, mm. right? So terms and words are very important. Mm. So instead of you looking at, let me manage money. Money is a big deal. The velocity is much. The energy is plenty. So you need to be able to just learn how to manage yourself around it. Wonderful, wonderful. So financial management is managing yourself Self. from what you say. Now let's get straight into it. What sort of technology, in what ways can you, um, can, can you gain financial management or can it help you? And yeah. in what ways can it be so, a disadvantage? So now, there are, there are inf we have information. We have lots of information that you can assess, mm. right? We have a lot of communities that you can assess. We have a lot of tools that you can assess. We have speed and flexibility. Mm. Um, we have um, ability to use things at your fingertips, mm. right? So these are all things that technology can help you achieve. So for example, if it comes to things like planning your money, there are apps that you can actually use mm. to log in your expenses because mm. one of the things that happens is what you don't measure, you can control, right? So for you to be able to control your outflow, you have to be able to measure what flows out. Because so what kind of apps are these? So um, we have, for example, um, the budgeting app. Okay. That's just the name. Okay. Budgeting app. We have a couple okay. of them. Okay. So what I normally advise people is download a couple of them, like two, three, okay. and see things out. The functionalities differ. differ. Some of them are deeper. So it depends on what you're looking for. And it also depends on your technical knowledge. So mm. if you're more tech inclined, you could find some. some. It also depends okay. on um what kind of phone you're using right mm. so these are things that might inform what you choose but look through them you will see things that might um interest you so you could use that to log in your expenses on the go just the way you go on and chat you could log in your expenses and at the end of the week or the month you could see 
you know, what's going on, so that you'll be able to see, oh, I've been spending so much on coke lately, or I've been mm. spending so much on X, Y, Z, right? Then you'll be able to know, to cut okay, down on what this will I do on that, this all now, I do to on be this. able to... In fact, yeah. I was thinking of that for fuel because I've always wanted to plan how much I spend on fuel in a month, but it is that by the time I buy this one, you, buy, you forget, right? Like, you know, now, one, they know what people will tell you. Now, this is me saying a scenario. Someone I know would say, ah, Online shopping is a major problem for me. Yeah. That's how technology has been an enemy to me. That's yeah. for the person. I don't know if you also think that way. But is there any way that someone can manage themselves when it comes to online shopping? Because, hey, I go up, I just type something, and then because of, you know, <laughs> when you, when cookies and all of that yeah. start coming, you know, I start you, right? seeing adverts of these kind of things, and people, they're impulsive by it. Just yeah. say, ah, I like this something. I know. In that way, is technology an enemy when it comes to financial management? So... I think you're your own enemy in that instance. Okay. Because the thing is, what technology has done is, technology is an amplifier, right? It's an ah. amplifier of anything. So mm. if you're an impulsive buyer, technology has not made you an impulsive buyer. You are just an impulsive buyer by default. So mm. even in the absence of technology, you will still, still make impulsive make buying decisions. Impulsive buy yeah. So you yeah. need to solve that problem. You know, what happens to so many people is that we're always looking for how to you know, disperse responsibility. We don't want to take responsibility. We want to push it to someone else. Mm. So now technology is taking the heat. Yeah, I know the fact that it can amplify. So mm. that's exactly what you're experiencing. But if you can be able to treat the sickness itself, mm. you know, that won't be anything to amplify. So, for example, I go online and I see things. I just see them. Mm. I don't... You don't, you don't, you know, no I don't push, feel you don't anything feel any, because yeah. I have a self-discipline. I have a self-training. And I have... You know, my money is planned out. So if I know that I want to buy a phone, for example, right, I'll plan for it. I won't just wake up and then see a phone and suddenly feel like buying one. Mm. It doesn't make sense, mm. right? So it comes down to the first thing I said, to the person. learning how to manage yourself. Now this does make quite a lot of sense because yeah. when you said it the first time, I know some people might have yeah. been, but now it does. Alex, you are always a treasure. It's always great talking to you. We still have you for one or two more weeks, yeah. so we'll still have more time to expound on uh, some of your wonderful, wonderful virtues when it comes to financial management. Thank you very much. Thank you all so right. much. We'll be able to pick up something there. It's all about you managing yourself. Technology will not make you an impulsive buyer. Like he said, it's just an amplifier. It will amplify that thing that is really important. All right, we'll just take this short time and I don't go anywhere. When we get back, it's our final guest of the day. Welcome back. Now, Africa is home for some of the most unique art pieces you can find anywhere in the world. And many different types of media are used for this art. Today, we have the pleasure of having someone who understands how to use clay to make masterpieces. For art display today, we have Jaku Kasi Natalie. She is here with some of her art pieces. She's a ceramist and has worked with many renowned artists in their studios and got quite a few distinctions, awards, prizes, and so much more accolades out of Cameroon. It's great to have you in the studio with us. Thank you for inviting me. All right, so yes. you are originally from Cameroon. Yes, I'm from Cameroon, and it's, uh, since 2015, I came to Nigeria. Okay. And six years, I'm living in Lagos now. Wow, wow. Yes. Um, it, it is always... Um, it's very interesting to find people who have come to Nigeria and have found us a, a position, a place for themselves. And it feels like with your art, you've definitely come home. Uh, talk to us about these pieces you have here in the studio with us. Who is this, for instance? Yes, this work, the title is The Boss, The, the Boss Lady. Okay. So I try to do something to give homage, tribute mm. to all strong women that have under them a lot of people mm. that they try to encourage, they try to give work, they try to inspire every day. So, and the boss lady, she's always reading, searching. Uh, she's always trying to innovate, to, to, to initiate. Mm. So this work was, some, was a symbol to, die, to, die, to those women. So yes. most people, when they work with clay, they... Uh, they, they are more of pottery artists. Yes. Uh, and, and I'm more familiar with that. The pottery yes. wheel where they make bowls yes. and, uh, you yes. know, uh, big basins and the yes. like. But the intricacy here, there's a lot of detail here. Yes. What uh, instruments did you use to bring this to life? Yes, uh, about what you said, I like walking beyond 
mm. what people know. Because when people hear clay, they will see poetry, they will see what the people are selling. That is not bad, but my work, I wanted to go beyond that. Most time I'm using a knife. I use a lot of knife. I have more than 20 knives. I like carving, I like digging the clay. Mm. I like cutting, I like producing holes. I like fighting, I like, I like playing with clay. So I like playing relief, yes, yes. This is a very beautiful piece, a lot yes. of detail in it. Yes. The knife work here is beautiful. Yes, it's uh, all But over. it must have taken a long time. Talk to us about um, how long. Yes, you know, after building the work, I don't allow the work to dry before cutting because you have to cut when it's, we call, it, we call that stage leather. Okay. And it looks like leather. Okay. So this is how you, you are able to do to give all such details. Mm. Yes. The clay itself, where do you source the clay from? Is it you, sold in a bag or you have to go and actually dig for it somewhere? Here in Nigeria, I used to buy clay that is ready. Okay. But clay is found around rivers or some type of mountain can have some type of clay. You know, the particularity of clay is the clay is plastic. It should be plastic. Okay. It should be flexible mm. so that you can manipulate it easily. Mm. But most time it's around rivers and Nigeria is full of a lot of type of clay. Let's talk about this. Uh, the, this is a head, or the is head, it a face? A head. There's a head right here on the yes. table with us. What's this about? Uh, this head is not made with clay. Oh. The model was clay, but I wanted to try some of my work in another medium. Okay. So this one is bonded stone, sort of marble dogs mixed with resin. Wow. So the title is uh, Beyond the Look. Beyond the Look. The, beyond the Look. Is there yeah. a reason why <laughs> it's tilted to the side and not standing up straight? <laughs> Mm, no, I choose to bend it mm. because of the hair. Okay. Yes, yes. It's, it's, uh... There's a lot of detail in the hair, I have to say, but I'm, I'm looking at the fact that the eyes are open, right? Yes. If the eyes were closed, I would have, you know, connected maybe more with it being on the side. Yes. When the title Beyond the Look is also is because some people, when they see a beautiful woman, they think she's just beautiful, but beyond that look, beyond that beauty, mm. she can be a strong woman, an intellectual woman. Okay. More than her beauty. So it's why I say beyond that look. So which medium is easier to work with? This uh, resin, marble resin, or clay? To, to reach this step, you have to pass through the clay. Okay. The model is the clay. Okay. It's later than that you produce the mold, mm. and now you use this material to... Create. Sort of, yes, the modern, yes. All right, beautiful. So to reach here, you have to pass through the clay. Mm. So uh, how do we preserve these pieces? Does it have a top coat of some sort, some kind of varnishing? Um, like this one particularly, no. Okay. Even the clay work, like my works, I used to advise my client, if it's dirty or dusty, mm. just brush it, just wash it like clay. You wash like you wash your porcelain. Wow. You wash like your mug at home, yes. Just wash them like this. I washed. I washed this one. Mm. Yes. So I, I've I've always wondered about uh, you know some pieces of art and how uh, long they they last and and the longevity of these pieces of art. Some are more fragile than others. You know, uh, does it depend on the medium you use? Let me tell you, the the clay mm. clay is the oldest medium. Mm. It's fragile, but it's the oldest medium. You know, clay help a lot of, uh, help our world to retrace history through a lot of, yes, if you see archaeology, a lot of was discovered, you have bronze, yes, you have, but you have a lot of pottery. Mm. Even if it's fragile, but it lasts. Wow. Wow. It doesn't fade, it doesn't, like this one, it will not fade, it will not change. It can be dirty, but you just need to wash it. Many artists say they have messages in their work, um, but they also say it's, it's a form of expression. This doesn't feel, there are some artists that, that express a little anger or, yes. or sadness through their art. Yes, yes. What sort of expressions do you mostly use? Uh, it depends on the time. Okay. You know, for me, each artist reflects his period. Mm. Like now we are passing through a lot of uh, crises in terms of politics, in terms of economy. It can inspire any artist that wants to do such, such type of engaged topic can try to read and trying to propose solution to this. I, like me, I used to do some engaged work okay. about abuse, domestic violence, 
even racism. Yeah, you, it depends the way you are inspired and you can do some type of research. And okay. Yes, yes, it happened. And, so, and yes. does it help you connect with people? What sort of people have you connected with and what sort of reactions have you got from your work? Many. Mm. In Nigeria, many. The, the public is reacting positively every year. And we have a lot of Nigerian buyers. That, mm. And I, I can use this opportunity to thank all Nigerians that are encouraging art in Nigeria mm. from foreigners or from Nigerian artists. Yes, right. we have many in Nigeria, many that are buying. I would love to see some of these artworks on display. Uh, do you have a, a showroom here in, in Lagos or are you working with with uh, galleries? Uh, usually when I work with galleries, it's only through exhibitions. Okay. So for now, I cannot say I have works on display. Mm. But so when, they, when, when people, they want to organize an exhibition, they can contact me. Okay. So, but I'd, for now, I cannot say I have works in there. But I'm preparing my solo show for the end of the year coming. I can't yes. wait. Yes, I can't for the end wait. of the year. I, and I would, also, we, yes. I would also love to learn from someone like you. <laughs> if, if someone, maybe for instance, we wanted our kids to learn or something yeah. like that, do you have like training classes and things like that? You can... I do take one or two students because my studio is small. Okay. Now, it depends the level or it depends on what they want to do. If it's student for their school, for their ITS, mm. I, I had one that spent six months with, with me. She's in America now. Okay. I have some that are in London. So it depends what they want. Okay. If they come for their IT for school. Nice. or if it, Yes. But I, but I cannot take more than two because of the size of my space. I have yes. to say a big thank you to you, Natalie, for coming to show us these beautiful pieces and talking to us today. We're going to see a few more of the pieces that you've worked mm -hmm. on. And uh, honestly, I, I can see the passion and, in, in, your, in your work there. Look at that. Yeah. Please come mm -hmm. along to the kitchen with us. Uh, we <laughs> have quite a few pieces on display here. I really yeah. wish they were already on display uh, so we could go out and see them right now. But um, okay. hopefully social media... Uh, you have it on your social media we Sorry. can see, yes? <laughs> yes, on Instagram. On Instagram. I Amazing. Think you have to move around. So you're working on this here. How yes. long did this piece take to finish? Um, this one was a commission. It took me less than two months. Wow. Wow. Yes. Two it's months. very big works. A set of three works, big, medium and small. Yeah. Yes. You know, I'm actually curious, as a woman, how are mm. you thriving in this industry? It's, I mean, it's a male-dominated industry. It's passion. Fantastic. <laughs> it's passion. Great. It's not easy, but passion makes you forget all the right. challenges. And just oh. do it. Just do yes. it. Oh, we're Thank inspired you. by that. Well done. Well done. Welcome to the kitchen. This is Chef Ify Million. And this oh. morning, she's made for you vegetable yam and oh. potato Pottage. Ooh. Ooh. Potage porridge. Thank you. Right. Pot, pot, <laughs> pottage. So yeah, please um, enjoy. Please have yes. a taste. It's been, it was yes. made with a lot of love. I do enjoy a lot of Nigerian. Ooh. Nigerian nice. What's Ooh. your favorite delicacy in Nigerian? Amala. Ooh. Ooh. That's the nice. first. Nice. That's the first. People always say jollof rice. Really? Yes, now. People always say jollof rice, jollof rice. We have jollof in Cameroon. Mm. Ah. So what do you say? Banga soup. Oh, wow. soup. Oh. I found soup. Ooh. Wow. Well, Cameroon Jollof still, still they learn, you know. But now. I love Amala. <laughs> oh. Great. So, so what, what do you think? think? Yes, very nice. Uh, yes. Mm, sweet potato. Yeah, yam and sweet, sweet potatoes. potatoes. Okay. And then she, you know, used a bit of vegetables there. Yes. Ugu. Ugu, oh. yes. Mm. Can you make any Nigerian delicacy? Mm, I mean, mm, egg sim. Ooh. Mm. Okay. No problem. Mm. Right. It's Amala, we love to learn that. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, we'll find one of our chefs to teach you. Yes. But you know, we have the same recipe in Cameroon, like I found like a moi moi. Oh, really? Wow. Yes. How do you yeah. make that? Mm. Uh, I found soup. The same thing, the same ingredients. The same afang leaf. The same, yes. Yes. Ooh, yes. Nice. Well that uh, afang leaf. Uh, mm. You know, we are actually the same. We share the same. Yes, exactly. water so, leaf. You know, you know. At some point, when you came, I was confused. I thought you were aquatic. Mm -hmm. I thought you were okay. Because oh. you had that accent, it's a bit of it, just a little bit. The <laughs> taste to it, um, but it's, it's nice to have yes. you. Even the okra, the same thing. Oh, okay. Nice. nice. Thank you. Those are Nigerians. Make a lot. They eat a lot of meat. Ah. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for joining us, Natalie. No we problem. appreciate yeah. you. Chef yep. Ify. Well nice. done. It's been Ify a wonderful, morning. wonderful Very time nice. on the show. Thank you for being a part of the show. We will see you tomorrow. It's Friday. TGIF.
Bye. Bye. Bye.